Before we actually talk more about how continents form and change, I wanted to talk about the different features of continents. When you look at continents, you will notice that they're actually made of several different kinds of structures. The large blocks of continental rock that have been around for billions and billions of years, some since the very beginning, since those pieces that I just showed you, we call those things quatins. Quatins are a large piece of old continental crust. Okay? Now, some of those pieces are actually covered with sediments and other pieces of the, that were added later to the continents. So, younger pieces of crust and so things like that. But some pieces of that old original rock are exposed still to the surface. And we call those pieces shields. Okay, so those are exposed pieces of old rock called cratons. Now, you also have platforms. And platforms are areas where the sediments are being added by eroding shields or from the ocean and gathering around the shields. And those are marked in, in the pink you see in the picture. The shields are more salmon color. And then you have the oregons. Oregons are pieces of crust, either shields or platforms, that were folded upwards because of collision events. So those will represent the mountain ranges of the world or all the folds of the world caused by collision events. You also have basins and domes, and those things are folds, upfolds and downfolds caused on the surface of the earth, and we'll talk more about that later. And you also have new crust, which is formed by igneous processes, or in other words, um, volcanic eruptions and hot spots, and we'll talk about that also. And you also have pieces of extended crust, which are new crust added to the continents because of accretion events. And so when you look at a continent, it's built of much more than just one solid block of rock, but it, it has pieces with independent history, and we're going to talk about each one of these things now. So, in this picture you see the representation of what is a shield and also what is folded strata, which we call oregons. So you notice that the pieces marked in tin or salmon were original shields that were around since the very beginning of the first continents. So you have the Greenland shield, the Canadian shield, the Brazilian shield, the African shield, the Australian shield, the Indian shield, and the Baltic shield. Also you have the Siberia, Siberia shield up, up there in the South Asian shield. These are some old old pieces of rock from the original cratons which are still exposed or not covered with sedimentation and things like that. And so some of this the, the continental mass though is also oregons or pieces of rock that folded because of collision events. For example, this large, large oregon here, one continuous oregon is actually formed by the collision of the Pacific plates against the North American and South American plates. So the Andy Mountains and the Rocky Mountains sort of, are forming because of this. This mountain belt, which includes the Alps, the Himalaya Mountains, are all forming because of the collision between uh, Asia and the African and Indian plates. Okay. Then you have the Ural Mountains, which formed when went long time ago when Asia collided with Europe. And you also have the Caldonian belts, which formed earlier during the formation of Pangaea. You have these these islands here around the Pacific, which are forming because the Pacific is being... Uh, two, two plates are colliding in the Pacific. And you also have these mountains, the Appalachian Mountains and North Africa Mountains, which form also when Pangaea collided. So mountain ranges are evidence of collisions between plates which may happen or have happened a long time ago or recently. But these folds in the surface of the earth are another structure that is common in continents. Another one is platforms. And I talked about this briefly, but this is the idea that whenever these mountain ranges erode or when shields erode or when material comes from the seafloor carried by waves, whenever this happens, sedimentation gathers around shields and cratons and you're going to form the formation of new structures such as this great canyon that you see here that is basically carved by a river but the canyon itself, the rock itself was not really old craton rock but basically you can even see the different layers of rock in the picture and you can see that this was basically made of over millions of years a successive deposition or sedimentation on one on top of the other and so this rock was made by pressing sediments together. And so this whole structure that you see here is not really a craton built by an igneous process that was really long time ago, but basically eroded material that gathered to form this large rock formation. So see, that's what a platform is basically called. And these are usually on these out, outer rims of the continents or surrounding the cratons and shields or in Oregon. And here you see an example of the Oregon that we've been talking about. 
also called mountain ranges. These are folds in the surface of the Earth that, when we talked about the collision events, they form every time collisions take place in the surface of the Earth, it will cause the folding of the surface of the Earth, and you'll see these things. Now notice that or at first, all the folds tend to have this spiky nature, like that. But after a while, these rocks will, this, these mountains will become eroded and look a little more like the Appalachian Mountains look at today. And we'll talk about that later when, we, when I talk briefly about mountain ranges. You also have igneous provinces, which are large blocks of new crust material formed by volcanic processes. And most notably, you have some in South America, in the Caribbean Ocean Sea, and you also have the largest one currently, which is the Iceland hot spot, which is basically happening because of the divergent boundary in the North Atlantic. And so these new pieces of crust are pieces that maybe later on, as continental plates move around, will become part of large continents, will be added by the large continents by accretion processes that we talked about briefly before. And these igneous processes are, are formed because of hot spots or large plumes which heist to the surface and breach the surface, and either in divergent boundaries or in any random hot spot. And, and this could even happen in the middle of a continent. And there are such cases, like as you can see here in the South America, and also there's some more in Africa and Asia. But it needs to find a sweet spot or a spot where it's just cracking already in the surface to so make it easier for the plume to rise through and punch through and actually burn through the surface of the earth. You also have things called basins. Now, basins are basically a change in either an Oregon a platform shield or any of these other structures that we already talked about. And basins are basically ha happen because either because there's new material added to the crust, which makes the crust heavy, and then basically makes the crust fold inwards like this, or because the magma that's sitting underneath the, that crust basically cool down, which means the buoyant force of the magma went down, which means that whatever is supporting the crust is no longer supporting it as much, so the crust folds inwards. It could also happen because of a collision between two continents f forces the crust to fold downwards instead of fold upwards, as they usually do to form mountains. And so you, you get this depression on the surface. Now, you see in this picture is a small basin because basically you see the road here, so it gives you a little bit of perspective on the size of this basin, but these things can be as big as an states or entire countries can be a form of basins, you know? And so there's basically two types, like I said, that positional basins are formed when new material gets added to the surface, forcing the, the crust to fold inwards, and you have structural basins which form because of either folding or the magma cooling down underneath, forcing the crust to fold downwards. The opposite would be something called a dome, and a dome formed when the opposite happens, when either erosion or weathering removes material from the crust, making the crust lighter, which makes the magma on the top push through easier and create this rising of the crust, or because a collision event that made the crust fold upwards, or because the magma got angrier or hotter, and it caused the, the movement upwards of this structure. And so you see the formation is because of these things. All right? Basins and domes are basically happening whenever the crust deforms because of alternating weight or buoyance force of the magma. If the weight increases or the magma buoyancy force decreases because it gets colder, you're going to get a basin. If the magma force increases or the weight decreases, you're going to get a dome. All right? And so that's what happens with that. And you also have areas called extended crust, which are the pieces of the continents which are added to the contents later to processes such as hot spots or even coral reefs or any other smaller piece of material which was created by whatever reason and the tectonic plate motion basically pushed this material into the large cratons making it become part of the cratons that were around for a really long time. So the only difference between extended crust and a craton is that extended crust is usually younger or has been added recently to the craton. And we call these pieces terrains or smaller pieces of crust which are added to, to the cratons and they have their own unique history and they're younger than the large pieces of cratons. All right? So you have shields, platforms, oregons, basins, domes, terrains, extended crust, oregons, large igneous provinces, all of these things are going to be put together to actually make a continent. If you, for example, look at North America, 
you will realize that it's actually built of several different pieces of geological material that have been around for thousands of years and some have been younger and and so looking at North America is a good example to see that each piece of rock has its own geological history you're gonna have large pieces of old continent across that have been around for a long time called cratons some of those are exposed and called shields others are covered with sedimentation from the erosion of shields and oregons and we call those um, platforms some of them are going to be oregons or folded material others are new material called large igneous provinces some of those material gets folded downwards and form basins some materials gets folded upwards to form, form domes and some material is new material or extended crust that was added later to the continent and through terrains that basically dragged were dragged by continental plate motion to collide with the continent all right and now in the next video we're actually going to be talking about the processes which make the continent grow and change over time so i'll see you guys then